the Sinai Giver can present. Seeking for my God. When does a person's dissatisfaction with the surrounding world start and at what moment the person's inner peace of a self-contentedness suddenly runs out? What pushes us towards the endless voyage to the absolute first cause, to God? When does the person suddenly realize that a superpower is guiding him in the twists and turns of life? When does the moment arrive when the presence of the superhuman power becomes a vital necessity without which life is senseless? Lord, transform my heart and my soul.
When a person loses his love for God, a hard period of defeat starts for him. The long struggle against the destiny, the never-ending rush, the life's vicissitudes accompanied by fear and panic eventually destroys his health. And when the life's colors and voices fade away, when the happiness irreversibly goes away, everything becomes senseless and the person eventually surrenders. Only years later, he understands that something irrevocable has taken place, and there is no longer the very thrill of love towards life that used to fill the soul so abundantly. Armenians used to live in this territory as far back as before Christ. The Armenian street is mentioned in history and the Armenian shops and houses are well preserved here up to now. The Romans conquered the whole land 60 years before Christ. As the historian tells, there was an Armenian legion in the Roman army at that time. The Armenians settled at the western wall of the city, exactly where we are standing now. As far back as before Christ, the street was called Armenian Street. 
The first written evidence of the Christian period tells us about the existing in the city Armenian clergy, Armenian church and a bishop, which means that there was a spiritual authority here by that time. It was in 154, about 150 years before the adoption of Christianity in Armenia in 301. Christ has granted us by birth with the feeling of being the eternal participant, the uniqueness of secret, thus protecting our inner peace and bliss from external obstacles. Some people know for sure about the existence of the supernatural creature, regulating all phenomena, the creator. What does the human being lead to God? Is it the immense love or the genetic element existing in him from the moment of his birth? Unfortunately, there are many people incessantly talking about their ungodliness with great pride and confidence. The technocratic civilization around us tries to prove us every moment that God does not exist and that the human being is almighty. They teach us about our physiology, genes, and our unconscious essence and bring forward fake scientific thesis deprived of divine basis and attribute to us some desires and instincts allegedly having deep subconscious basis. Sometimes the material world takes the role of making the purest source of our divine ego turbid and of severing our connection with God. Only at mature age, one starts to feel the devastating effects of alien and soulless techno-civilization on his initially pure essence. The illusions end up with maturity and the person realizes that he has been forced to have invented false notions of his real essence. Whereas, by his presence, Christ proves the existence of another world, the one that is inside us, that is pure and virtuous, and does not need any external irritating factors that are immoral and quite often lead to destruction. Kobur Varum 
What pushes the person to the first cause of all? Is it the divine love or the unbearable, inhuman burden of agony, which can overcome only with the help of God? <laughs> Not finding the solution to his numerous problems, a person starts to look for salvation. He turns to God to get the answers to his questions. In his searches, he understands that he has always been in need of God and that his nature has always longed for the God. He has been seeking for God with the hope that the creative codes of the blissful sense of the Eden's garden's inhabitant existing in the secret layers of his soul will become active in his consciousness. God guides us and the invisible answers are present from the very beginning. They just develop little by little and become visible. The endless voyage full of the unknowns gradually brings us to a logical reconciliation, which increases in parallel with discovering the answers to the questions we have inside us. During the voyage, the sad prospect changes, and we feel how something fills the emptiness deep inside us. The Lord sends us His angels, and it turns out that our messages addressed to saints are heard, and that they lead us through such a way that we would have never thought we are capable to take. As the psalm says, if the Lord sends you the furnace, then he is the first to enter it.
In order to restore his connection with God, a person takes his earthly life roads, goes to Bethlehem, enters the Christmas manger, the Jordan River, goes through Christ's crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension paths so that to get convinced once again that God is not only supernatural, unearthly being. For those who had material consciousness, God became human and passed through an earthly way, serving as an example with his own lifestyle and being a support and consolation for us. Once we make a pilgrimage to the only known consoler, repassing his path and assuring ourselves that the unearthly consciousness has lived a life of corporal hardships, nevertheless, he was crucified, resurrected, and descended. His divine nature has not yielded to earthly rules, and he has shown us the way to salvation by personal example.
The Lord has been calling me for centuries through my genes. There might be a question, what are genes when there is Jesus? However, why is it so that when a person achieves a certain age, his ancestors, or in this case, the ancestors' forefathers' senses start to activate? In a certain period, a small seed planted by one many centuries before reaches you wrapped in several generations, sprouts and blossoms. The bud opens with maturity and your heart is breaking of nostalgia for the God temporary forgotten, but still the one crucified for you. Two centuries ago, my ancestor Prince Agahan Adamian walked to Jerusalem and was announced a pilgrim, Mahdesi. While repassing the way my great-grandfather had covered, I was trying to catch the feelings he had had. <laughs> Yeah. 
Today the pilgrimage to Jerusalem is like a voyage, but then it used to be a dangerous undertaking, as the pilgrim vowed to get to his Lord's grave on foot, passing through deserts barefoot. Once in Jerusalem, he had to undergo a long and complicated process of showing repentance. He had to participate in two, three masses daily in Jerusalem and other holy places. He would pray in St. James Cathedral and in Holy Archangel's Monastery. He would go at night to the Church of Holy Sepulchre, where we, the Armenians, have the right to pray liturgy on God's grave at every dawn. The liturgy has a cosmic, noble, and mysterious sacrament in itself. The liturgy priest passes through the Savior's heroic path so that we could recover by being purified. There is nothing more humane in the world than when the liturgy priest transforms into Christ, giving his flesh and blood to a sick and tired person to reinforce him.
I was walking along the cobbled roads of the city of Old Jerusalem, where Christ, John the Baptist, and other participants of cosmic mystery had walked 21 centuries before. I visited Bethlehem, the Christmas manger, and the upper room where the Holy Spirit descended on apostles. I kissed the stone on which they put my crucified God right after being taken down from the cross. I visited his grave, touched the resurrection stone, as well as visited many other sacred places connected to Jesus. I would still have to wander for long to reach my dying and rising God. But fortunately, I loved the church. I loved it with its holy mass, smooth rituals, church order, the church etiquette, equipment, utensils, live singing and music, incense cut us off the course of the civilized world of the 21st century that is so strange to our essence. Our soul is a window, a corridor to the world's cosmic spirit. When we lose our connection with Holy Spirit, we will lose ourselves.
Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights above. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His heavenly hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise Him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Praise the Lord from the earth you great sea creatures and all ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding, you mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all setters, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, all the people of the world. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go.